Now I'm Bob Cobb from the Bassmasters, and this is LD and the MC. Well, as the amazing Mr. Bob Cobb has told you once again, I fucked it up. Sorry, Nick. You're leaning into your damn microphone. You're going to fuck. You're I mean, we've got right good now. sound from the. I know, screaming but it's just to yours. make a point. <laughs> He's, guys, tell Dave he screams in his sometimes too. I do. Tell him that. I do, but not at the very scream. start. Like, I don't. And the cowbell cut used to cut it out. I know. Wow. I get excited. Here we go. As the amazing Bob Cobb told you, you have arrived at LD. And the MC, number 18. Number, yes, I just can't even believe that's even possible. But yes, 18. Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning. Hey, Peyton finally, Manning. I get it. Yeah. All right, There's he was an 18. He was 16 at the University of Tennessee, but uh, yeah, he was 18. He was Who 18 else? in the NFL. Daryl Strawberry. Right. Two different hey, careers, very different. Bit, <laughs> fan of they both, both had a good time. They both had a good time. <laughs> fan of both. <laughs> well, David, I'm going to jump right into our mom's basement moment. We like to kick off every show. If you are new to LD and the MC, we kick off every show with what we'd like to call the mom's basement moment, where we read some of our favorite YouTube or social media feedback slash comments. And we got a good one last week, and it's from a, a repeat offender. I would say, uh, that really doesn't like when we talk about MLF in any any kind of way. He always seems to think that it's always hatred, but you and I tend to just report what's going on, and I guess they read into the tone of it. I don't know. So I don't, I don't know where they would have got that from. <laughs> well, I've done a lot of negativity, you know, driven maybe. things in my life, but maybe. I'm softening you, aren't I? Don't you feel that? Yeah, I feel like you, you are, or... I feel like I drag you down sometimes too <laughs> to my <laughs> level. Sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> I feel like sometimes you're like, ooh, this is fun. I understand this now. <laughs> I like living like, in the ghetto. Oh, not to you. Yeah, know, I mean, is... you know, <laughs> I didn't mean the ghetto. I just mean like starting fights and start some yeah. Kind of, uh, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Two mom's basement moment before I get in trouble. Before we get canceled? Yeah, uh, again. Speaking of canceled. Uh, so this was in reference to us talking about Red Crest on last week's episode, and it was kind of up in the air, which we're going to get to. But this guy says, if they canceled Red Crest, you'd say they're pansies. They keep Red Crest. You say it's dangerous and irresponsible. They delayed the start to give the anglers an extra day to travel. You know how difficult it is to reschedule an event. More spewing of BPT hatred. So... I just wanted to address that. And I did in the comments and I told him just not to ever listen again because he always comments stuff like that. And I see by your face, that wasn't the right response. <laughs> we don't have the kind of viewer numbers where we can tell people to go away, Lucas. I think we do. I think we do. Because our levels of success are at whole different levels. Here. <laughs> well, yeah, probably. <laughs> You've been far more successful in life than I ever have no, been. No. This is a success for me. <laughs> you give me 4,000 humpers a week and I'm excited, okay? Looks I'm like we on. made it. <laughs> Looks like started from the bottom, now we're here. <laughs> I'm all about it. But I just want to address that because, man, it's easy to label a guy that works for Bassmaster as biased right it's easy to label a guy that works for npfl who has spoken out against mlf and different things over the last couple of years but also has a relationship with a lot of people at mlf just like you do mm -hmm. and so it's easy to go oh you got like this this guy in particular on on low budget live last week said you bass master ass kisser <laughs> i was like well what do i get from it if i kiss bass master ass like I'm fishing the Bassmaster Opens and I paid my entry fees like everybody else. Like, I don't know what I gained from kissing Bassmaster ass, but I wanted to address that and say, last week we were saying we thought that the tournament needed to be moved and I didn't really understand why they couldn't just reschedule, that it was putting anglers in danger. And now, Dave, MLF pretty much agreed with us. <laughs> so... Uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to respond to your mom's face okay. for a moment. It, it, two different things. First of all, I mean, let's just address the Red Crest thing. I mean, I, I agree. I think we were very supportive. And and, and I think what they did was the right... I, I think it's the only choice. I mean, I, and I don't think it has anything to do with the tournament. I think it really has to do with what's happening in the local area. I mean, yeah. when you don't have power and you don't have heat and you ha have the <laughs> situations they're dealing with down there, 
they don't need one, not one law enforcement person waving bass boats <laughs> into <laughs> boat ramps in the morning That's and doing right. all the stuff that we need. So the Red Crest, I mean, congratulations. I mean, not congratulations, it's not a situation you want to be in, but but it, it was the right move. Yes. I mean, and I thought we were supportive of it. I, maybe my boy duck an impersonation in the middle of our support maybe please do it right now no no it, it's not uh, uh, it's, uh, let's look wait i'll it. tell you this <laughs> no but uh, well, that, that that just, people get distracted by that kind of thing but my bigger problem is with you okay we work <laughs> hard on this bull crap every single week it may not seem like it but but i have big plans for this silly little podcast to 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 it's your retirement plan a huh? much bigger podcast than it is you can't be telling people not to comment. Okay, listen. I, no, I didn't say it. not to comment. I didn't say not to comment. I said not to listen. I said don't listen. No. <laughs> I said don't listen. And I called him a jackass because the guy comments on every freaking podcast I do. If I say, hey, man, my buddy fished MLF, MLF hate. It's like, what? What? Every single time. And he's never commented anything else other than that. Ever. And I still think to this day, he was our very first ever mom's basement, this fella. He claims he's real and that it's not a troll account, but I disagree. I think it's, I think it is 1000% a troll account. And it's it my, may be, and it may be, and, and often they are, but, but I mean, here's are. my, here's my bottom line. Even troll accounts are likes <laughs> and frigging comments, dude. And I'm trying to You're win so the algorithm. Thirsty, David. I, I am so thirsty. thirsty. I am. Do you see how many times I pick up this cup during the freaking oh, show? Yeah. I am I the thirstiest. Like at some point you are going to hire dancing girls in the background. I feel like that's coming. If we get that budget, dude, I will hire dancing midgets. I don't care. I mean, it will be spectacular. Um, Can you say midget? We're going to find out. <laughs> Only one way to find out. Um, uh, but uh, Just my our way through it, guys. <laughs> my take on all this is it's a community. And, and don't worry, our humpers. I love each and every one of yeah. you. You guys have proved that when somebody gets out of line and they kind of keep them in line. So yeah, they bump them back. So, uh, I mean, I say that now, but next week, somebody's going to say something bad about, about me and I'll take it. And I'll be like, get out of here, leave us alone. But uh, my, no. my, my overwhelming theme with, with comments like that is I, we do work very hard. And, and <laughs> my, my wife said that on, uh, on LBL uh, last week too, when she was on the triple threat. Shout out triple threat on LD and the MC. She's getting a shout out. And uh, so she's spectacular. I, I, just so you she know. Is I mean, awesome. I watched, she is awesome. I watched, yeah. I watched that episode and I put a piece <laughs> of paper on your side of the screen. Do you have a troll account? I think you're some of the comments mm, I've been reading. I'm something. getting one. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, I'm distracted. You <laughs> no, mentioned the triple threat, and now but I'm saying we we work hard my on this, and it is it is very much so. I'm glad I, you're going to be in a hole in the ice later today, buddy. Miss Sarah is going to deal with you, but I think that uh, you know it's just frustrating because this is free content ultimately, and it blows my mind sometimes at how people respond. Like it just does. I don't need, I don't need praises. I don't need you kissing my ass. I don't need to, I don't need to hear, Hey man, this podcast is my favorite. Now, is it awesome to see those? And are there way more of those than the negative? Absolutely. And it's awesome. And we appreciate that. And I like getting feedback, but when it's the same, that same dog and pony show, that's when I get like, Hey man, just stop watching. Like it's not for you. Obviously, you stop know. saying that. I'm gonna say it. Stop saying I'm on stop this watching. I'm blocking Dave. This is me blocking Dave. I, stop watching on his channel. Facts of Fishing is a, a lot less commercials and fun for the whole family. Watch it all the time on my you channel. You sold me out with commercials. I'm I have sorry. no control. Of I mean, you're getting rich, is all I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> Here's bottom line. Uh, I, I honestly feel that uh, I, I guess I follow the trend of, of radios, radio stations. I mean, they always kind of feel like, I mean, I don't know if you realize this, if you paid attention to this show for the last 18 weeks, sometimes I say things just to elicit a response <laughs> and, 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 and you elicited a response. So I feel you were successful, but, uh, uh, thanks for commenting. You can you can banish them if you wish. But I mean, I speaking... didn't block. I didn't banish. I didn't oh, banish. you didn't banish. Okay, yeah. okay. All right. Let's move past mom's basement moment. Okay. Lots of problems ahead, and your freaking biggest problem is 
the, the, the fact that, that we are shooting this, like we try to shoot these as close to Wednesday as possible. They're usually right. shot sometime between Monday and Wednesday. And, and it's really up to our schedule where we're traveling, that sort of thing. And we try to get as close to Wednesday because things change, especially this time you of year. Know. This is such a mess that we are literally shooting this on Friday. So this is like two days after our last one launched, yeah. but we are five days or however many days ahead of this one launching. So there could be a lot of things that change. So we could be totally wrong on a lot of That's the right. news we report this week. But my biggest story is, are you going to get out of your house? I mean, you are stuck. You are dealing, <laughs> you are you are a pseudo Canadian right now. And your biggest dude. problem is digging out. I, I started the dig out this afternoon because we have some sunshine hitting my asphalt driveway and I'm able to chip through some of the two inches of ice and six <laughs> inches of snow that we have. So I am, because uh, isn't it? Yeah, oh, it's amazing. Yeah, it's so great. My back loves it. But after LD and the MC on Wednesday, uh, I guess it was, yeah, Wednesday evening. So you and I recorded it uploaded around 6 p.m. That night, we got six inches of snow in about three hours <laughs> up here, just which is unheard of for my area mm -hmm. on top of the ice. So we've been dealing with it. But uh, yes, I am supposed to travel this week to Texas for an event. Last podcast, you told us you were not going on that trip. Yeah, wasn't? well... <laughs> Well, uh, Dave, uh, you're going to go. We're going to go. Okay. And, go. and uh, it, well, it got rescheduled. It got bumped up. And now the weather where I'm headed down in, in, uh, in Texas, go ahead to choke Canyon, Texas. And it's going to be in the 80s. Are you competing in the red crest? It's, uh, it's, oh, that would be I'm fun. Not, I'm, well, they wouldn't let me pay my entry. Fee. I try, <laughs> I try, but, uh, no, I headed out there for a for a sponsor event for the fine folks at Six Cents, and we're going to do some media. Going to be some YouTubers there, some tournament officials, some guides, and uh, you know how the media events are. They're a lot of fun. Get to hang out with everybody. So hadn't seen any, everybody in a very long time, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. But 16 hour drive. We've been uh, Darian's going with me, and uh, it's we've been kind of mapping it out. And my driveway is the biggest hurdle right now, honestly, because I've got a little incline coming out of my garage and, and I've been out here showing it's ridiculous. I, I, I thought earlier, if Mercer could see this. I mean, Has the garage door opened yet? Like, have you? No, I haven't. Oh, I haven't. Gosh. That's a good point. That's a good point. I haven't done that. You're going to wait till the morning when it's real cold to do it? Well, it's supposed to be 10 degrees again tonight. Um, and that's the Perfect. thing. All this stuff's melting. But then what happens today? Yeah, exactly. So heading out in the morning, we'll see. Fingers crossed you guys be thinking about me. But we are recording early, and I'm thankful that the MC wanted to do that because this weather is just stupid. And uh, thinking about all of you out there that have been through this because, like Dave said on last Wednesday's show, um, we're not ready for this in the South. <laughs> Our houses are not ready for this. Okay. Our roads. <laughs> just one little tip. Get the, get the boat out now. Get it out tonight. Just so you know, don't – I know you want you it really to be all – You really do think so? Yes. Okay. If you, I mean, if you, if you can open the garage and it's clear and you think there's going to be no problem, you could leave it in, but dude, I mean, everything is going to melt all that runoff yeah. off your house and everything. And all those little seams around the garage door and everything, when you go to open that in the morning, I mean, it's similar to, I don't know if you watched the Bassmaster classic once when we launched when it was eight degrees oh, and yeah. boats started sticking to trailers. Um, it, 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 it it's a mess. And, okay. uh, so yeah, if you can get it out, uh, I would get I would get it out tonight. I remember um, that classic dude. It, everybody knew how cold it was going to be, and I remember I said to an angler like earlier in the week, I'm like, "You need to go get antifreeze, you know, because we'll keep little things antifreeze, you know, you do using your locks and stuff, but you also your live wells and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, it's carpeted. You know, I know your boat isn't, but a lot, yeah, you know, but, especially but, yeah. a carpeted boat, um, that'll." Those, those little fibers go together and they freeze together like Velcro yes, that you can never open. So I remember when the boats are like frozen in the trailer and everybody's freaking out and everything. And I remember saying to a guy, I'm like, he couldn't get his rods out. He could not open his rod locker that morning. And, uh, and I'm like, I told you to get antifreeze. And I remember the guy looking at me and he's like, I thought it was a made up word. I didn't <laughs> think it was a real thing. He's like, you say stupid stuff all the time. <laughs> But it, antifreeze is real, and it can be your friend in situations like this. So good luck getting your boat out. Yeah, folks. buddy. I need I need all the luck I can get. <laughs> <laughs> We've had bad luck with weather, and that is, like we said, causing havoc on a lot of tournaments. You know, Red Crest, obviously, we talked about it. I mean, it, and the Elite Series event, you know, was 
pretty close to sounds yeah it, they did a vote you know amongst the anglers and and it was it was about as you know it was pretty much a tie right down you know close to a tie and um but they're going to go ahead and luckily you know knoxville is one of those areas that it, it's all the reports i mean you guys the humpers were say, blowing me up yeah. saying all oh, we got is rain here and so thankfully because i said well it's four hours from here they're gonna get where we're getting i did my weather forecast and they're like no luke cantori <laughs> sit down <laughs> shut up <laughs> but so, go vols you know <laughs> yeah so uh so we're we're full steam ahead and and uh you know the guys are are you know it, it's it's one of those things, you know, in a situation like this, nobody's wrong. Nobody's right, really. You know, like you got guys who everybody's leaving a different situation. You mean some guys, it's not going to be anything to get there. And some guys, it's going to be a little bit more treacherous. But luckily, Bass is, is getting to go ahead. Um, and, uh, and and Redcrest has had to change their things. But man, 2021 is obviously just as freaking confusing as yeah. 2020. I, like I said, I didn't have this on my bingo card. Ice, ice age in the southeast you know uh the good thing is with my luke duncan weather report here guys it looks like you guys are going to get nice weather up there in knoxville some some weather in the 50s and 60s in february and i say you better send it <laughs> you better have that event because when i saw that february knoxville date on the calendar originally i was like it could have very easily been just like it was here this week. I mean, they tend to get more ice and snow than we get down here where I'm at in Tennessee, obviously. Uh, being closer to the mountains, a little higher elevation, they get hammered on up there sometimes. So when that was first on the schedule, I thought, okay, that's throwing the dice a little bit going there at that time, you know, because it can be frigid, but looks like you guys are going to, uh, to miss it. And I think it'll be a really good event. I want to ask you this on that vote, on the angler vote. Do you think... Dave, do you think that some of the votes are, hey, man, yeah, it's really bad here where I'm at. My roads are bad. Or do you think some of it are, some of it could be guys that are like, well, if we go back in April, it'll be, the fishing will be better and I won't freeze my ass off. Well, to be clear, there was, we a weren't bit going of back in April, to be okay. clear. Uh, they, okay. they, they, they well, were, and they, I just threw that out there. Just, they, just. They were given three options, and I, okay. I'm only saying this stuff because I know by this point some angler will have talked about it in his social media. So okay. I'm not breaking any news. But the oh, three boy, options, sorry, were, the three options were to keep the keep the, the event as is, move the event by a couple of days so that guys can get an opportunity to get away from home and that sort of thing, or I believe move it to the week of March 11th. I think it was okay. right. It would give before or take pick a few days, yeah. right before yeah. pick week. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so, so that, I mean, as far as I know, it was basically, you know, right down the wire for, I think it was 45 votes for to keep it 45 votes to go, uh, and move it. And then there was 10 votes that wanted to move it two days. So basically it leaned towards people wanting it to keep it as it was. And, and, you know, dude, like I said, you can't judge anybody's opinion on it, but I will be honest, you know, like the, I did get a lot of texts where people were like, you know, we got to move it the fishing will be a lot better in March. <laughs> and, and really that's not the, you, you know, the date of the event is the event. And, um, uh, you know, there's a lot that goes into an event. Like I, I could not imagine what they've gone through over with Redcrest. I mean, honestly, oh, like, yeah. I mean, how many times has it been rescheduled? Not just rescheduled, third, but moved and three different locations. Like it's yeah. been from Grand Lake to Palestine. And now what you follow? Is that yeah, and, and, and yeah, Lake Eufaula, and two days before it starts, they announced it's going to before practice starts. So they had some guys out there in Texas already getting prepared. And and I think, you know, there are probably going to be some dudes happy with that decision that hadn't left home yet that are in the Southeast. And there are going to be guys out there that are obviously mad. I, I know I saw uh, Zach Burge on Instagram was very, very vocal about the fact that he was, he had already gone down there. Yeah. Waiting on a, uh, you know, waiting on a decision. They had delayed the start of Red Crest by a day because a lot of people, in my opinion, what it seems were fishing the Toyota series at Gunnersville and they delayed the start of it by a day for weather. And you had, I mean, right down to Boyd Duckett, Gary Klein, I mean, owners of MLF fishing that event. So delayed it by a day. And then they were all kind of in a holding pattern. But I saw Randall Tharp was down there in the ice and snow in Texas already had left his house. So you had guys already out there getting ready. So, of course, those guys are going to be upset. But ultimately, I think it was a good move. They know 
what's going on at Ufala, right? They know yeah. the facilities. They know it was an easy move. They're like, hey, we were there in February last year. We can pull this off again. It was just a, it was a quick move to have this event. You said last week, it just seems like there are powers at play that do not want them to have this event, which I thought was a great joke. And it's very funny, but it's like, you start going, holy crap, man, this is like the tournament that can't happen. They had one, Edwin Evers wins it. And then they are like, hey, we're going to hold off a year and not have this and then do it the next year <laughs> it's just been it's been this ever since so we'll see if things kick off in Uval, alabama ladies and gentlemen <laughs> and, and, and in their defense or we have locusts <laughs> yeah i mean that'll I mean, be next in, in their defense too and you're seeing things from anglers like you said some anglers upset of, yeah. you know the travel down there uh i mean in their defense you also have to understand what anglers are going through anybody in that situation anybody that spent hours oh. on the road white knuckling it through friggin' snowstorms and you you know what i mean like uh, i mean i've yelled at multiple family members of after course. drives like that and i did not meet it so so to to be stressed about going through that and that's a that's a horror hair imagine that i mean i got here finally what what it's not here that's anymore right. you mean right. you made me i got to where there's no power or nothing and now i got now i gotta drive 12 hours to alabama it's frustrating and, it, and, and, and it's not just fair to say that MLF guys may be frustrated. I'm sure there's a lot of elite series oh. guys, if you talk to them right, that are pissed about this decision because I know how that goes, which brings me to, I think fishermen are some of the biggest complainers on planet Earth. I think you would agree with that. We're never happy. I'm, I'm the same way. You, you're happy for a little bit. We're all manic. It's a roller coaster in the fishing world. So somebody like somebody's kicking their heels up about the fact that it's on you falling out. I mean, you take guys that live Justin Lucas. I saw him post last night. He's like, well, I'd rigged up for Palestine, but time to re-rig it. He's in his warm garage in Gunnersville, two hours down the road, man. He's like, hell yeah. Okay. No time. How cute is this kid? I mean, cutest, I've watched that video. The cutest I, man. Yeah. I mean, it's shocker that Justin Lucas oh, yeah. and his beautiful right. wife have a beautiful, yeah. super cute kid. I mean, how I tough that this, kid's life I say be. this lovingly. This is total side note. Justin Lucas, the most hateable guy in bass fishing, just because he's just got it all. He's just uh, he's, he's a beautiful man. He <laughs> I, is I made a post man. about his latest YouTube video and said, just further, you know, just fueling my hate for you. He's posting top water from Lake Okeechobee in 80 degrees, wearing his flip flops, netting five pounds. Get out of here, Justin. No, good dude. Cook cooks food all the time. You see that? Anyways, sorry, I got it. I just started my man crush on Justin. You Lucas. really do. I you did. have a thing. I do. For him. I do like J, some J. Luke. I call him J. Luke. I don't know if you ever did on stage or not. Dave, but that's what I call him. J. Luke. Do you, you? Is he like that? Yeah, seems to. He's yeah. my bro. We're cool. Tell me more. I may about start you guys. spiking his spiking my hair like him. You know, not wearing a hat. Yeah. No, you'll always wear a hat because your <laughs> inner true. redneck has to come out. You show up like a boy band and you turn into freaking Larry the Cable Guy. I don't get it. I mean, <laughs> dude, you rock what you got. When I had hair, I freaking uh, used it. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I totally derailed us, but that's not no surprise. So you are for Redcrest being moved. We would like to say that in a very positive light. We are for Redcrest being moved. I'm very Thank for it. But now I'm about to get in trouble. Because, <laughs> uh, uh, and, and I will say this, dude, I work for Bass. But listen, uh, I've always said this. The guys that are over there fishing, they were my friend. A lot of those dudes were my friends before I ever worked for Bass. And they'll be my friends after I work for Bass. It's, it, this isn't a, whenever I say anything negative about it, it right away, it's like, brrr. Of like course, you said, yeah. even when we try to say positive things, it gets skewed negative. So I do want to be clear. This isn't a MLF bass thing. And that's really what the problem for right from your mom's basement moment is. People think it's an us against them. It's a, it's a, if you like bass, you have to hate MLF. Maybe you just like bass fishing and you don't want to get in the middle of this. So this isn't a, an us against them. And, it, it, and really people shouldn't look at that. But this is just stupidity. And, and I came across something, and dude, <laughs> I mean, this is, uh, it's a podcast. I mean, there was a podcast out there, and, and it, we're not going to play the podcast. We're not even going to really publicize the podcast, but, but this is a narrative that we've all heard. And, and to hear it, they continually spread this out there. And to me, it just doesn't, uh, let, rather than me talk about it, let, let me just play it. And the, I'm going to be. The first voice you're going to hear is the podcast host of this particular podcast, who I believe is a MLF camera guy. 
So similar to me, worked for worked for Convenient, one of the competitors. But I get it. <laughs> and the the person he's interviewing, um, Aaron Bershears, who is their yeah. tournament director, I believe. Good correct? dude. Good dude. Yep. He is their trip welding, though, yep. for, for lack of a better term. Obviously, they're an operations guru. Yeah. So let's listen to this. This is something we've all heard, but standing of Red Crest is Red Crest is going to be Major League Fishing's top. It's going to be their premier event, right? It's going to be the Super Bowl of bass fishing. Uh, one more time. What? 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 Super Bowl of bass fishing. Bowl of bass fishing. Bass fishing. Fishing. It's fishing. And the Super Bowl of bass. The Super Bowl of. And the Super Bowl of hey, bass question. Was he talking about the Bassmaster Classic? <laughs> So, um, I, but I, let's listen to it one more time and listen to the, the host's response to it. I like I, He says, gulp. Exactly. <laughs> listen. Oh, I'm horrible at this part. So, <laughs> should I'm start a podcast. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. Yes. So it's, that's it's, right. Exactly. Here's what I don't get, dude. Like, I can't. You want to have the big and the, the, the it may be one day the biggest tournament ever, but the Super Bowl of bass fishing is already gone. Like, dude, I'm not opening a chicken joint and calling it finger licking good. Like, really? Like, uh, do you? Is it just me? Like, uh, does this not drive you nuts? Yes, it has since the beginning of the first. They first ever announced the Red Crest and the Thunderbolt Ball and everything else. My, my biggest my biggest problem with all of that is just the arrogance of that, right? And I'm not saying Aaron's arrogant. I'm just talking about it, the overall narrative of, hey, let's act like, like if you get on the MLF website, which I do, checking out FLWs, whatever, it says, we are bass fishing. Like that's their slogan, which would insinuate there's, to me, that there's no other bass fishing. I mean, you know, you can read into it, whatever. But that kind of statement, the Super Bowl bass fishing, when the Bassmaster Classic has been called the Super Bowl bass fishing for years and years and years and years. But I don't, I don't, you just, you just can't, Dave. My thing is you can't just say something is that. We could say this is, you are now listening to Joe Rogan in the outdoors. And that doesn't mean we have millions of followers, right? No, I mean, Dave, I've got I've got an announcement. I'm Batman. <laughs> I'm Batman, Dave. Yeah, you're Batman. I'm Batman. I just decided that right now. See how that works? I, I he, have no muscles. I have no back cave. No, but what I what I, what are you like? Everybody knows what the Super Bowl of bass fishing is. It, it, I feel like if they I, keep I feel like, like yeah, and it's not even. So are they trying to like? Do you, is it is it a situation where if we say this enough, people are going to be like, oh. That's what oh, I know. That's the Super Bowl of bass fishing. We've been wrong all these years. Like, like you, there's history here. Mirrors. Like, it's yeah. not like it just. This isn't something that like they just. I, I did a little research. I will be honest. I I, I okay. dug deep for this one. You know, I don't do research. I didn't even use the Google machine. I used something better than that. I used Uncle Bob, our intro uh, man. Yeah. I I talked to Bob earlier today, and for those that don't know, Bob Bob Cobb of Bassmaster Bob Cobb. That, now he you know, was at the first bass tournament ever, right? Yeah, so like he, basically, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I asked him. I said, "Pop, because I was doing a little research. You know, I wanted to back up this stance. You know, I saw that podcast. I'm like, how can you like? They even titled it, you know, the Super Bowl. And it, yeah. it, like, if you listen, it, it, it which will be the title of this one too, by the way. <laughs> of course, they repeatedly are beating that down people's throat, and that, and it's not somebody on a stage saying it. It's it, I almost give that person a pass if you're trying to hype something or whatever. I mean, that's a weird thing. I could never say that, but. Like I say, sometimes on stage, I've said the greatest anglers in the universe. I get it. There's some that aren't there. It's not the full, but that's a dramatic on stage. This is their tournament director. This is a narrative yeah. coming from MLF. We're the Super Bowl of bass fishing. So I asked Uncle Bob and I said, Bob, do you, because I was Googling. I'm like, I'm looking for an article that like from... 19 the whatever yeah. that says you know this is when we used it the first time so i can say like how can you say this but i said so pop where did this come from and he's like well he told me the freaking day they came up with it like you know this isn't like you put two and two together do you realize that the first bass tournament happened in 1967 that that is historic that wasn't the first classic that was the first bass tournament do you know what other significant event happened in 1967 lucas was that the uh, first Super Bowl, David? 
That is correct. Ding, ding, ding in 1967. And then the first classic happened in 1971. So when I talked to Bob, he's like, you know, we were literally sitting there and we're coming up with this. And but we're looking at newspaper after newspaper talking about the Super Bowl. Crazy. And remember what the Super Bowl was at that time. It was the first thing. It wasn't the Super Bowl we know today. Like if I tell you the Super Bowl is coming up, you know exactly what it is. You've got your own memories, your visions. Well, they were selling the Super Bowl, you know, so they they were they had to tell people what it was. Well, the Super Bowl was going to be a clash of the greatest Super Bowl, you know, football players from the AFC and the NFC. And they were all going to amalgamate and make the Super Bowl. Yeah. Well, so it only made sense as a narrative at the time. You know, that's exactly what Bass started as. I mean, initially, the very first tournament, I mean, Ray Scott literally reached, wrote letters to, you know, in Tennessee, this is a an angler that everybody talks about. So he reached out to them and, and he was the original trash talker said, you know, there's no way you can beat Bill dance or so-and-so and and got them all to come to this event. So that's what made it the Super Bowl of bass fishing. And just because a bunch of anglers that used to compete for the Super Bowl of bass fishing come along, you don't get to take that. And and it's not my right to defend it, but I feel like I, have to say something i mean and if i'm totally off base and you're like shut up mercer you selling bass all the time then maybe i am but uh, i grew up looking at one thing as a super bowl of bass fishing dude i mean it's it's, you don't inherit that through i just don't get it like to me it's it's insulting to the history of the sport and it it, i I don't well you can't you can't ignore the past and you can't ignore history, okay? Some That's history- like slapping Bob Cobb and Ray Scott in the face, is it not? It, it, to me, it is. And I've said that anytime I've ever read an article, and it's the great, man, we are the greatest, you know, the greatest championship of all time. This is also an organization, though, that has, and this is where the confusion comes in for me, they have a general tire world championship as well. I don't even know what that tournament is. And it's like a TV show. That's what I'm saying. You have a world championship and the Super Bowl of bass fishing. Which one's bigger? Which one's better? And within the same organization, it's it's so confusing to me. I, I just, I don't know. Why do they have a Red Crest and a world championship? Well, I, I'm not here to figure out all that stuff, but I'm just like, you're never, you. the goal. I mean, let's be honest. The goal of MLF is to become, to take over the bass master. I mean, they've been quite yeah. clear. They want to be, Okay, so yeah, go they want do to it. Be the only game go do it, and do you know when it matters when people start saying that's the Super Bowl of bass fishing. Mm-hmm. That's the because you know when they started saying it. I mean, it's it, to, to me it doesn't matter. Like if I run around, if I if I told you I was the Ray Scott of announcing, I would be, and that's the dumbest thing I could ever do. The last thing I want anybody to do is compare me to Ray Scott because number one, he's the friggin' chicken that laid the egg, <laughs> or Fish Fishborn, or anybody yeah. who came before me because that was their job and they did it their way. And you want it, it doesn't, it's really a mess, but that's just my take on it. I, 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 I don't know. Whew. I like I, it. I, I mean, I you, like it. is it wrong? Like, am I wrong? I don't think like, it's wrong at all, man. When, whenever I, I saw that, I was like, uh, okay. I mean, it's bold. <laughs> it's bold because, okay, let, let me, let me put this in a very simple way. Um, it takes a lot to move an event. It does. You couldn't move the Bassmaster Classic in two days. <laughs> wow. Uh, you couldn't, yeah, but you, just you because of the implications the of, but, but, approach. but that's what Duncan asked. You're turning Get it out of here with that. Measuring contest. No, 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 I'm not. But I'm saying it's the biggest bass tournament in the world. You can't move it in two days. You can't. If you're good, because you're good, maybe. <laughs> good luck. I, I'll say that to anybody at Bass's face, including yours. Good luck. You ain't moving that in two days. We rescheduled it for from March to freaking June. <laughs> <laughs> and I still no. felt like that wasn't enough time. It takes a long time. I'm just saying an event of that caliber takes a long time to plan. Now, granted, their business strategy is different and they don't have an expo, but with Red Crest, they were going to this year until COVID and whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but 
they don't have all of that to relocate is my point. Yeah. In a championship event, there aren't going to be hordes of fans lining up at Lake Eufaula because there's nothing to, there's nothing for them to be at, if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't know, man. It's just hey. not, it's not, it's not the biggest tournament in bass fishing. It pays a lot of money. There are amazing pros in it. Amazing pros. The Those biggest resumes people. in the spot. Like, I, I mean, I'll look at our yes. elite series anglers and be yes. like, your resumes do not compare to the million like, percent. But it's not the biggest tournament bass fishing. It's still just, it's just not. Will it be three years from now? Who knows? I don't know. But here's right my take. Today, Honestly, not. when you think about it, dude, like, think of how many. If you don't respect the past, you're never going to be the future. And, and when you really think about it, every opportunity, and dude, again, I know this sounds anti MLF, but it's not. <laughs> it's pro angler. I hate the fact that they freaking crushed FLW. I hate the fact that they took David Dudley's titles and tarnished them and made them worth less. I hate it, it, you can't write the future. You know, you can't, you can't just because we've got. You know what I mean? Like, it, the how about this one, it, real quick? We talk about rewriting things. They bring in, and I just happened across this this week. Looking at the Gunnersville turn, when you hover your your mouse over an angler, it shows you their earnings. They pumped in their Bassmaster earnings. I know. I into know. Into FLW. I know. I know. And they, so and they, they don't break it. down the vet. Like I, I was trying to do some research and some anglers, you know, to. to to see what they had won where. Like, I wanted to, you know, yeah. break it down. It, it's all one. Like, it's, yeah, it's one. All blur, it's all a blur now. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, so it's just, it's weird. It's, it's like they, they can convince 80 anglers or number anglers to go over there. And that's great. They made the decision and it's not judging that at all. But, but it was just the anglers, just so you know, you, you don't get the bass stats and the, and the <laughs> slogans and you don't get the vest with tassels yet. <laughs> And the cowboy hat, I no just, matter how much, I it's, mean, even yeah. if you're from right up the road in Alabama, <laughs> you I don't mean, get the, the best in the tassels. I, uh, yeah, you said it best, Luke. I mean, how many, how many Super Bowls can there be in bass fishing? That's it. Let us know. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I probably got grumpy today I, this was you a are a little grumpy wasn't. but but i think that uh i wasn't until i talked to bob like i really between yeah. you and me when i first listened to it i was like you know this will be fun on the podcast we get to you know, they're like it's ridiculous how they're talking about it. but when i talked to bob and you know and he starts telling you like what and he was there he was there he, <laughs> he sat and told me about the two desks they were sitting in and they were talking back and forth and it's just like I feel like you're stealing from my uncle Bob. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you, you, shame it, on you. It's, it's his history. It's his, you know, and and I, that's one of the greatest honors to to be able to share in some of that history. But you, you don't, you can't just take it, you know. Like I mean, but uh, or maybe you can. I don't. No, I don't think you can. I think enough people see through it that you you can't take it. You know, it's we're a very divided uh industry and sport and man you know I, I talked about this on my last podcast a lot of people were tagging you and i in negative comments they were making on mlf moving it and i wanted to say and i and i want to say it here i was for them moving this guys 100 like percent critique a lot of things that go on there um and and it's like you said them crushing flw that's something i'm very passionate about because i was an flw guy right i was over there for years i knew all the people I knew what we were working towards, what we were working hard at in angler meetings and different things for it to all just go away. And then it become AAA overnight and be a feeder system. That, that's, that's really upsetting for a lot of guys that are still there that don't have another home. So they're still there. They're not there because they like it. They're just yeah, there because, you know, they're trying to see if what's coming uh, with all that. But so I, I look at a lot of this from an angler point of view. I, I, I just do. But he, when you a change like that isn't about marketing, dude. You know what I mean? Like a, a change yeah. like that isn't. It's marketing's one thing, and getting. But you're changing so many people's lives. You know what I mean? Like what every every Bassmaster Classic champion is relative because people are still winning the Bassmaster Classic today. You know what I mean? Like Hank oh, Parker. No. 
will always be a two-time Bassmaster Classic champion unless the Bassmaster Classic becomes the General Tire Mega. <laughs> What, you know what I mean? Like I, I, we're on the same wavelength. I was no, no, no. But what I'm saying, like you can't, no, you. you can't I just erase it. the past, and and, and but you also can't just replace the past. Like you can't yeah. take. So to, to me, and, that seems weird enough. So. And I and I will say this in in defense of them, it's not the first time somebody has claimed their championship is equally, you know, to the classic. When I fished FLW, it frustrated me at the way we talked about the Forest Wood Cup. Was the Forest Wood Cup amazing? Did it give away a lot of money? Absolutely. Was it a hell of a trophy? Absolutely. Was it a very hard tournament to get to? You damn right it was. But in the way it was presented sometimes by FLW people, it was like the classic didn't exist. <laughs> you know, the World Championship of Bass Fishing, they would they would carry that on sometimes. And I'm like, hey, psst. <laughs> uh-uh. We're not that just because of the history, just because of the past. Now, was it a championship that I think shouldn't have gone away? You're damn right. It should still be there. It's like you're saying. It sucks for those guys that won it. And I have several friends that did that it's that it's just gone. It's like, what was the – tell me, granddad, what was the Forest Wood Cup? I mean, it just, it just sucks. I mean, Scott Suggs won a freaking million dollars on the damn thing, dude. Like, it's incredible. It's gone. It's gone forever, and that sucks. And it's really – that really, really sucks. And I don't think people realize – how much it's gone you know what i mean like i yeah. think when you listen to this you you can't take it from your head because to me it's never gone i mean i, I have a hard time course, calling yeah. it anything but it is but ask a college kid <laughs> and never furthermore ask a college kid about the pp top 100s you know what i mean they don't remember eastern that, like, invitationals <laughs> If it's not currently happening, it gets that's just how it goes. You just get the world, world goes that you know, way. The, the wave comes in and the sand friggin' washes <laughs> it away. But then there's podcasts like this that'll remind you, God, always oh, that was Bob Cobb and Ray Scott that came up with that. So that's right. I'm not going to say it, but let's end on something positive. You got anything positive to finish uh, this? Yeah, I, I would say this will get more than like 30 views. So it'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I guess. I hope <laughs> that's your. If you don't scare them all away, me. Well, tell them people not to come back and crap like that. That was cool. one guy. There was one guy. We don't have a lot of guys, Lucas. We have a lot of loyal humpers. Hey, right? I got one to finish. Did you freaking okay. see? Um, well, let's get Guggen talk because that pisses off tournament anglers and it makes Guggen people happy. <laughs> Did you see the note? Because this is real news, dude. I, I'm amazed, and I thought it was fake when I first looked at it. Oh, Did you I know see Perrick was yeah. on the freaking BBC? BBC. I am joining right now Alec Perrick, who is on a lake in Texas. Alec, what are you doing? He's out there freaking ice fish. I mean, in Dallas. How cool! I, and caught one live. He did. He did. He did catch one. I, yeah, I saw him post about it. You think he had a pre hook? I don't know. No, no I don't no think idea. he did. I didn't I watch the clip. I just read about it. I read about I, it, but. It, do you know he interviewed me once? No joke. Like I, I somebody no. sent me a clip a little while ago. I should have. Actually, if we had technology, I'd play the clip. Uh, he interviewed me like I don't know, two thousand and six or really? something. Really, like, like a long time ago. I no, not two thousand. I think it was like two thousand and whatever. It was years and years ago. But I was. He asked me how to make a living. It wasn't two thousand six. I think he was like six then but anyways it was it was within the last 10 years but he asked me how to make a living fish and i gave him all sorts of advice on how to uh, i said stay in school his school is important very important. Um, it's very important so so when they said so the funny thing was he said somebody sent me this clip like a month ago like I said did you know that you remember and he was just a kid who came up and it, it was at a show in chicago i remember got a it. gopro probably with him. Yeah, yeah there's a bunch of those kids that come up and ask you things and it, and dude, I've always been cool with it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I actually remember the interaction, you know, when I watched it, but so I'm watching, I'm like, Oh my God, I'm telling this guy how to make a living fishing <laughs> and, and he's kicking my butt on YouTube. Um, so you I your go, advice wasn't started bait company, get 2 million followers on YouTube. <laughs> Rule no, no, my advice was to stay in school. Cause it's very important, but I did tell him I didn't, I did tell him that I said, no, I didn't stay in school, but don't follow me. You should. Yeah, you should. So then the funny thing was I go like when, after I watched the video, I'm like, wow, how crazy is that? That he's done so well. And I suck so much. Um, so I went <laughs> to his YouTube site, you know what I mean? To his channel to check out. Cause I'm like, I wonder how many followers this dude has. 
and I go to his site, and the very first video, Duke, is, is Luke, is it says how I quit college. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, oh, I've screwed this kid up, but evidently it's worked out for him. It worked so, out uh, for him. The hey, BBC would agree. Hey, P, uh, I did a little thing on yours a number of years ago. Maybe you give us a shout out. Uh, Maybe you give us a little collab, yeah, AP yeah. Basson. No, nah, just a couple of viewers. It'd be wonderful. He hasn't posted a fishing video in a while, apparently, and that was big news to a lot of his followers that he was out there ice fishing and then he made a YouTube video about it because he's kind of been MIA. Doesn't care about them anymore. All about the BBC now. He's, oh, got, he's, got, he's gone international. <laughs> he's an international fishing superstar, Alec Perrick. All, the headline for this, interview. Alec Perrick, all about the BBC. <laughs> 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 Ladies oh. and gentlemen, this has been LD. And the MC. <laughs>